Okay, these were the three most missed questions on your Unit 9 Quiz 1. Um, so they're numbers 1, 2, and 6. And when I graded your quizzes and returned them, I included little comments about why points were missed and how many points were missed. Um, and so hopefully, uh, if you weren't sure what the comment meant, watching this video will help you kind of see what I was trying to reference. Um, but as always, if there's any question that you still have lingering after watching the video, after looking at the answer key, um, send me an email, comment on your, your assignment in Google Classroom, whatever you prefer. Um, but please feel free to ask because I, I do want to make sure that all your questions are getting answered. Okay? Um, so first up, we have numbers 1 and 2 which fell under the same instruction. Solve for x such that x is between 0 and 2 pi. We can include 0, we cannot include 2 pi. Um, so number 1, we were given tangent squared x minus 3 equals 0. So if I were to start by isolating my trig here, that would mean adding the 3 over. And then here's where the first common mistake took place. To get rid of this squared, we have to square root both sides. Um, but remember, when you square root, it's plus and minus root 3. Um, not, just, not just root 3, but also negative root 3. Um, and so then solving for x here, the second common mistake was misidentifying your reference angle. We're looking here for which of our angles, which reference angle, gives me a tangent of root 3. And then because we are plus and minus, well, well tangent is positive in all four quadrants. Um, so we'll be naming ones um, in, well, yeah, in all four of them. Um, so in this particular case, if we were to, to figure out what angle gives me a tangent of root 3, um, you'd be thinking through your different angles. So pi over 6, pi over 6 has a cosine of root 3 over 2 and a sine of 1 half. And tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. So 1 half over root 3 over 2 would give me a tangent of 1 over root 3. Pi over 4 has a cosine of root 2 over 2 and a sine of root 2 over 2, so sine over cosine um, would give me a tangent of 1. And then pi over 3, which is the angle I end up wanting, my 60 degree angle here, pi over 3, um, has a sine of root 3 over 2 and a cosine of 1 half. Well, root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half is root 3. And so we're wanting our pi over 3 angle. Okay, and again, we want to name that pi over 3 angle in all four quadrants because I want positive and negative here. Okay, and so here we would have pi over 3 for my first quadrant, 2 pi over 3 for my second, 4 pi over 3 for my third, and 5 pi over 3 for my fourth. Okay. Okay, number two. Number two, we are um, looking to factor this particular, and we see we have a squared and a not squared, so it's going to be some sort of factor. Um, if the one wasn't here, we could do a GCF factor, but because the one is here, we're factoring this one like we would factor 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Um, and just instead of calling it x, we're going to call it cosine x. Um, and so here was our first common mistake. I had a number of people who actually recognized that they needed to factor this that way, which is perfect. But unfortunately, what, what this factors to is 2x minus 1 and x minus 1. Oops, let me not write x because that's going to end up becoming cosine x. Um, x minus 1. And so if you had a comment on your quiz about um, the factors needing to be minus 1, not plus 1, that's what I was referencing. It would be 2x, or in this case, 2 cosine x minus 1, and cosine x minus 1, not plus 1. Okay, and then setting these individually equal to 0, so we have 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, adding the 1 over, 2 cosine x equals 1, dividing the 2, cosine x equals 1 half, um, over here we have cosine x minus 1 equals 0, adding the 1 over gives me cosine x equals 1. And so then we're looking to identify our reference angles for this one. Um, so over here we have what angle gives me a cosine x of 1 half or a cosine of 1 half? 
Well, that would be, in this case, my pi over 3 angle. Pi over 3 has a cosine of 1 half, or 60 degrees. Um, in this case, we want positives, and so here was another common mistake. I had some individuals who um, got the pi over 3 but forgot that there is another possible quadrant within these restricted domains um, here, or this restricted domain set. Um, and that would be the fourth quadrant. The pi over 3 angle in my fourth quadrant would also have a positive cosine, right? All students take calculus. And so if you had a note on your quiz, something about, you know, don't forget other possible quadrants, that's what I'm referencing, um, is that there is another quadrant that gives me a positive cosine here. And so this would be x equals my pi over 3 for my first quadrant, and then the pi over 3 angle in the fourth quadrant is 5 pi over 3. Over here, um, the only common mistake that I saw was this, so cosine equaling 1, I shouldn't say the only common mistake. There were a couple of mistakes made, but the most common mistake was this. It's a quadrantal, right, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Um, and so cosine equals 1 at this angle here. And so what I saw was people naming 2 pi, and for some people they named only 2 pi. For others, they named 0 and 2 pi. Uh, the problem with both of those is this. 2 pi is outside of my domain, right? This isn't equal to, so I can't actually equal 2 pi. The only thing I can equal is 0. And so this angle is called 0. Um, and then there were some people who forgot that it could be called 0. They just named it 2 pi. Um, but this angle is originally called 0, right? And then we spin around 360 degrees, or 2 pi, and then the angle that was 0 becomes 2 pi, right? Or I should say the, the, ang the axis here, right? That we, us that we originally called 0 becomes 2 pi. Okay? That's number 2. And then number 6, our last one. Um, now number 6 is going to be potentially speaking a little bit challenging to demonstrate only because people did it two different ways. So actually, let me really quickly rewrite this and I'll do it both ways so that whichever way you tried, you can check your answer. So 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x. Okay, so um, first over here, I'm going to do it manipulating the left side of the, the proof. So if you did not try to manipulate the left side of the proof, go ahead and fast forward because after I do that, I'll do this one and I'll manipulate the right side of the proof for people who tried to do it that way. Um, although again, even within those manipulations, there's a wide variety of ways to do it. So um, if, uh, again, like I said at the beginning, if after watching this, you're still going like, I don't, I don't know what happened, <laughs> um, feel free to, to comment on your assignment or email me or whatever. I can always make another video or um, write out an explanation or whatever because um, I want to make sure you get your question answered, okay? So, on the left. For those working on the left here, I saw some people who changed into cosines and sines, and while there is a way to make that happen, I would say it's not very pretty, and so I think on almost everyone's quiz, if I missed you, I apologize, but I tried to catch it on it. anyone who changed into cosines and sines. I wrote a note about trying to, instead of doing that, substituting our secant squared identity in. Secant squared x is equal to 1 plus tangent squared x. Um, and so I would recommend in both of these secant squareds, plug in 1 plus tangent squared. And then down here, because this is behind a minus, you have to do one of two things. Either when you substitute in your tangent squared x plus 1, you need to make sure you put parentheses around it, or you need to automatically distribute that negative in, one of the two. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses, and I'll distribute it in my next step. Okay? And then I'm going to just do a little bit of reordering here. So up top here, I'm going to move this 1 to the back. Tangent squared x plus 2 tangent x plus 1. And down in the denominator, I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to distribute that negative. So this is 2 minus 1, which is 1, and then minus tangent squared x.
Okay, because what we now have are two things that can factor. My numerator up here factors like x squared plus 2x plus 1. And so x squared plus 2x plus 1 factors to x plus 1 times x plus 1. It's just instead of calling it x, we're going to call it tangent x. And then in the bottom, we have a difference of two squared. This is 1 squared minus tangent x squared. And so this would factor to 1 minus tangent x and 1 plus tangent x. <coughs> right, difference of two squareds. The two squared elements get split, and then 1's minus 1's plus. The nice thing about those factors, then, is that something now simplifies on the left-hand side because tangent x plus 1 and 1 plus tangent x are equivalent, so they can simplify. And I'm left with tangent x plus 1 over 1 minus tangent x, which is the same thing as 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x. Okay? And so our problem is done. Okay, so if you worked on the left-hand side, um, you can go ahead and stop the video unless you want to see it worked through on the right. Um, then you can keep watching if you'd like. Um, and if you still have any lingering question on the left-hand side, like I said, contact me and, and we'll get that answered. For those working on the right-hand side now, um, and again, I, I saw a couple of different places that, that people went with the right-hand side, and so as I walk through it, if that's not the, the route you went, contact me. I'm more than happy to, to check that for you, um, to maybe work it out your way in a video or to, uh, to type up an explanation or whatever, but let me know if there's something else you still have a question on on the right. But for those who worked on the right, most people looked like multiplied by the conjugate of the denominator. So 1 minus tangent x multiplying by the conjugate, this would be 1 plus tangent x. And then here was the first common mistake I saw on people's quizzes. Um, these are, are two different quantities that are getting multiplied here, right? 1 minus tangent x, 1 plus tangent x. Same with the numerator, 1 plus tangent x, 1 plus tangent x. Meaning to combine these, you have to FOIL. You can't just do like 1 times 1 and tangent x times tangent x. You do have to FOIL those out. Um, and so rewriting my numerator real quick and denominator on the left. If I FOILed this numerator up here, 1 times 1 is 1 plus 1 times tangent x is tangent x. Tangent x times 1 is another tangent x, so that would be 2 tangent x. And tangent x times tangent x is tangent squared x. In the bottom, we have 1 times 1, which is 1. And then positive tangent x and negative tangent x will cancel. So the outside and inside will cancel. And the back, we have negative tangent times positive tangent, which is negative tangent squared x. Okay. Um, and so then if you worked on the right, my recommendation is, well actually for both sides, is right to always be looking at your answer, trying to kind of see what's happening there. And so as you look at your numerator, you, you notice it's getting pretty close, right? 2 tangent x, 2 tangent x, those match. The question is how do we get it to be secant squared? Well that one's a, a pretty quick substitution here. Um, and you know what, actually for the, the sake of it, I'm going to take a moment and just reorder that so we can see it. You don't have to reorder. You can do the substitution immediately if you see it. But reordering that, we have 1 plus tangent squared x. I'm pulling that tangent squared x in front of the 2 tangent x. So that we can see what we've got here in our numerator is the 2 tangent x and 1 plus tangent squared x, which is secant squared. Right? And so you're just going to substitute in your secant squared identity. Okay. In the bottom, this one's a little bit trickier to see because it would be really nice if this was 1 plus tangent squared. 
Like I said, that was 1 plus tangent squared. We'd be able to substitute in the secant squared. Um, but what you've technically got here is a manipulation of your secant squared identity. And I saw people who took a wide variety of ways of working through this manipulation. Um, some off to the side did a separate proof to prove why they could substitute into to tangent squared. Um, but the one that I kind of found interesting here was this. Let's see if I can emulate it. I think they changed it, if I remember correctly, into 2 minus, I think it was that. Yeah. I just looked at my screen to remind myself. Um, they changed this 1 minus tangent squared x into 2 minus 1 plus tangent squared because that's equivalent, right? If we distributed that negative in, it would send them back to that that's original step, 1 minus tangent squared. Um, it's actually, let me write that in my denominator. Minus 1 plus tangent squared. And the only reason I like this is it helps us to really see exactly what's happening in our problem. Um, because this, these denominators now are equivalent, and this 1 plus tangent squared x can become secant squared x. And so we'll have the 2 there. Um, and so then you are done substituting your secant squareds in. Okay, so again, if there are any questions still from your quiz that you uh, did not get answered by looking at the answer key or watching this little video, um, let me know. I'll get them answered for you, okay?